sub players. Good morning. You know what I'm going to try to do later? I'm going to try to simulcast on my website, YouTube, the other website, and the Chart Summit. I could be in four places at once, taking over the world to remind everybody not to invest in gold. Tick tock, tick tock, everybody. Tick tock, tick tock. The countdown is on. Uh, as you know, I've been telling you, telling you to short into any strength in gold since May. Uh, not a fan. Obviously, you know, I'm a silver guy. I know they do travel together. But you know what? I'm not counting on silver doing anything. I like coins. I mean, I would love to see some $50 value on some ounces of coin. I mean, ounces of silver. But I would never put a time limit on it. So in the next seven to 10 years, if silver goes to, let's see, I've been averaging prices between silver between 18 and 24. So 18 and 24. And if it goes up to 50 bucks in like four or five years, still not a bad investment. Because if you could double your money in four years, in theory, that's a pretty good investment. You know, if you could double your money in five years, that's a pretty good investment. People forget that. And that's the conversation we were having yesterday about when people say this is a terrible market. Which market are they listen, are they looking at? I guess they own the S&Ps and they only make money if the S&P breaks new highs. That's a very sad way to live. That's an investor's life. That's a hope and faith trader. We actually trade the markets and there is opportunity abound, just like Salino and Barnes. You know, Derek, I've been looking for you. I see you have a coach out there. You're doing your thing. I hope you're trading options. I hope you've been popping into the chat room. Blanche43 is the password. You all got a couple more days. I'm going to be so generous. I think that I'm going to be getting together. And I forgot if my wife said I can do this or not yet. But on Saturday, right, after basically staying on the air for 11 hours on Monday, uh, six hours yesterday, I just never stopped talking. And because there's always something to talk about. There really is. I mean, you can go in so many different directions. There's so many opportunities on a daily basis. But the conversation over the last couple of days is I read the internet. And when I'm talking about reading the internet, well, first I get 7,000 emails a day about how we're all going to die. And then I get another crop of emails talking about stocks that I was trading that they, of course, alerted everybody to. And the best part of those emails, they always imply that they bought them at the low and sold them at the high. Just amazing how the internet always knows about every stock before it happens and they bought it below below where they came from and they sold it higher than there ever was it, it it's so funny i mean it, it really is but when i get into these arguments if you want to call them an argument with anonymous people on the internet and uh you know i don't mind a educated informed debate show me what you're saying try to convince me on your point again opinion is doesn't matter doesn't matter what you think i'm not here to debate about your opinion everybody's got an opinion they're like assholes everyone's got one but if you're going to tell me that the market's been terrible and you're saying trade all the traders you know are saying the same thing or actually, he wrote, all the traders I know are thinking the same thing. And I said, well, there's your problem. You're thinking. We actually do things. And so go back to the point. If you make 12% on an investment officially in the stock market, you've done well. You're Warren Buffett if you could do 15%. You're Dave Tepper if you could do 15% over an extended period of time. Think about that. Think about it. How many 15 percenters were there yesterday in the market? A thousand? I'm not even talking about options. I mean, some of these stocks we were trading, IMVT, uh, Salino and Barnes, which is still hot right now. SLNO. Salino and Barnes. I'm going to look to short it today. 
because usually stocks that go from four to 30 tend to go down. It's hanging in there right now, but I'm, I have what we call a borrow. So I, I go to my broker. Eh, I like saying that. Go to my broker and I ask them to locate 500 shares of Salino, S-L-N-O for me. And, ooh, it's going to cost me $16.30 today to have the access to short it. So then I press this button and boom, now I could short Salino and Barnes. And if you have a broker or a platform that doesn't do that as simple as I can, as I just did, you might want to go check out my friends over at Trade Zero. They have a platform basically dedicated to shorting, and it's uh, pretty impressive. It's the best in the business, especially for shorters who know what they need to short stocks. Pretty good. I personally don't use Trade Zero because I am set in my ways and. Uh, I'm not sure if that feature where you have to send your orders at the same time is still on. I think they have a way around it. I don't want to get too into that. But what I don't understand is what market is not, if you're a trader, which market are you talking about that's not awesome? All you want is booms and busts and pumps and dumps and dumps and pumps and rips and rolls and Dips and rips and buying the dip and selling the rips. If this is the market, let's, if we could bottle the greatest two years, actually, I'm going to throw in, and again, people forget, the greatest bull market in the history of mankind was concocted by the government to save us from COVID. You know that never should have happened. The queue should not have gone from 185 to 408. That was the manipulation, and they overdid it. It's not supposed to do that. Markets are not supposed to go up 50%, 100%. It's not. Remember 12.5%? 12.5%. 12.5%. Market went up 100%. So what we're doing right now, I think, over the last couple of years is we're consolidating that ridiculous run from COVID lows to Kathy Wood top. And I call it the Kathy Wood top because let's all remember who the champion of momentum stocks was, Kathy Wood. But you don't invest in momentum. So Kathy Wood and that guy that was criticizing the market, they're in the same boat. He probably owns the Kathy Wood fund, and he's sitting there waiting for it to go back up. And he considers himself a trader. He's not a trader. You're not a trader if you, first of all, you're not a trader if your main strategy is hope and faith. Hope and faith are two strippers I'm going to see when I go to the Vegas Super Bowl. Well, I'm going to see more than that. What? Anybody going to Vegas for the Super Bowl? I got my tickets already. First Super Bowl in Vegas, I'm there. Very excited. Never been to the Super Bowl. Well, I've never been in the Super Bowl. I've been outside the Super Bowl. This guy that thought he was like this big broker, he's like, yeah, we're all going to the Super Bowl. Back when I was a stockbroker, we made this big plan. We all flew down to Atlanta. And we get to Atlanta, and he's having a hard time getting us the tickets. I was like, wait a minute. We came here with the idea that we didn't all have tickets yet. Isn't that the first thing you want to do? And basically, we spent most of our time in like clubs and strip clubs. But what was pretty cool about the whole, well, I don't know if it's cool or not, but we were there for the Ray Rice, not the Ray, the Ray Lewis event. So whatever happened in that club, we were there in that club. So when the chaos broke out, there we were. And then Ray Lewis going by and this whole hubba baloo. That was the highlight of the trip. Oh, the highlight of the trip was, you want table dance? No, I'm just going to watch the game. You want table dance? No, I'm just going to, I'm going to watch the game. I got, I got, I'm going to watch the game. You want table dance? No, I don't want a table dance. No. 
<laughs> you want table dance? <laughs> Still funny to me. Twenty five. It was the uh, and it was a turned out to be a really good Super Bowl. It was the last minute Rams freaking Warren Moon, or I don't even know he was the quarterback at that point. Titans, right? When the Titans were good and they were in the Super Bowl, came down to the last play, stretching out. We were supposed to be in that game. You want table dance? No, I do not want a table dance. So anyway, come on in. I'm going to try to do a four-way simulcast today. That's about to sound funny. I'm going to try to do my website, the Chart Summit, the YouTube, and another friend's website. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but I assume we can because I'm just using, I'm probably going to use two cameras, two, two computers. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Might just blow up. All right. Good luck today. I don't know what I'm going to, I'm probably just going to be chilling until something comes along. Market's trying to lick its wounds right now. And uh, if it rolls over, and by the way, I just want to point out one more time. UVXY. UVXY. If, if it, anytime the market gets down, anytime the market is, uh, volatile. And you know it must be volatile if UVXY has a couple of good days to the upside, right? In the back of your mind, say to yourself, okay, cool, when do I short it? You could short UVXY pretty much any time and make money. Now, I'm prohibited by law to guarantee anything's going to work for you. But let me tell you something. This is the only guarantee in trading. If you can hold UVXY short for any extended period of time without being scared out of it or, sh or squeezed out of it, you can't lose. It always goes down. So yesterday when it was above 18 and you thought to yourself, oh my God, this market's crashing. The next thought you should have said, I know it's going down and it looks awful right now, but UVXY is still going to go down probably tomorrow or the next day. And look where it is now. Down like almost a dollar. So UVXY being down a dollar isn't what it used to mean. Oh, the market's definitely going up right now. UVXY always goes down. What you want to look at is if UVXY starts to go back up from here or doesn't keep falling, the market's probably still weak and we are going to go down some more. I still think we're breaking yesterday's lows. I still think we're going... Got, I would feel a lot more comfortable seeing the cues test the level that I wanted to see. And uh, I set up what we call now the, uh, I've invented a new chart pattern. This is called the Shawshank Redemption obtuse triangle pattern. And what it's doing, it's meeting, I have multiple time frame VWAP with trend line meeting a specific price level from a couple of months ago. And it gets me to the price of 346.15. It's only nine. It's only 11 more points down here. But if the cues don't hold that low from yesterday, it's on. Bro is on. Didn't trip. But the folks were freaking. And the pilots... They were laid to the bone, home. So blood have it out and jam shit. Tighten that bad sucker in the rumble like a mother. Shit. Now, if you know that, you should, if you know your 80s comedies. There's a low print that we broke yesterday, 340, 354.71, right? And we managed to come back. That was a scary moment. But right under there, we have what we call the six-month multiple time frame VWAP at 351.76. 351.76, 350.00. Double, 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 double,
obtuse triangle pattern is telling me that we can go to, yeah, let's call it 346.71. And if we don't hold that, all hell's going to break loose like the emails that I've been getting. That, and we're going to go into 331 and a quarter. But if this market does, the Qs I'm talking about, I don't care about the Dow Jones or the S&P, if the Qs go to 331.25, first of all, I'll be covering a shit ton of Qs on my naked calls. And I'll be looking to buy calls for what notoriously is a good November and December. So if they rip this market apart a little bit some more, rip this market a little bit but some more. What did I even just say just now? I got get another cup of coffee. Bring it. Bring it down. Bring it down to me to where I want to buy it. You know, so far, if you've noticed, and you know you have, stocks are where we want to buy them. Look what Rivian's doing in the low 20s. There's buyers. Look what a firm's doing here in the low 20s. There's buyers. Those are on your checklist, right? Still like in the rig. Every time that pulls back, there's buyers. That's a good stock, right? And what you should take away from the days, when the market's going down, generally every stock's going down. What you want to take away is when the market rallies and you have that few or five, four or five stocks, or if you own more than four or five stocks, you're crazy. If you've got a bunch of stocks that are not participating when the market finally rallies, sell them, dump them. They're being left behind. You don't want stragglers. Anyway. But uh, I'll see you guys again later. Uh, TikTok, TikTok on the gold. I don't know if you guys remember the gold short. Uh, the gold short is still in the inverted Shawshank Redemption obtuse triangle pattern. And I think it's going lower. I have a target of 173.71 on the GLD, according to the Shawshank Redemption inverted triangle pattern. And again, you know what? I think I invented a chart pattern because it's been working. You think I'm joking around, but I, I think I, I'm onto something here. Upper trend meets lower trend meets price. Basically, I just gave you the formula for the inverted obtuse triangle Shawshank Redemption pattern. So if you see that in a think script next year, it's mine. But uh, yeah, I wish I, I wish gold and silver didn't have to travel together because I would love to see gold crash and silver rally. The divergence is a little bit off. Silver should be a little bit high price based on the correlation historically between gold and silver. What did I just say? I sounded kind of smart right there. <laughs> I read that somewhere. I read that somewhere. Just spit it out. Sounded good, right? But uh it really is true. Silver is just, a, it's like the redheaded stepchild. But one day, one day, as we've been saying for the last 26 years, one day, one day it's going to bust out. Whoever they're, whoever's manipulating it, right? The bag holder mantra. There's somebody out there manipulating the price of silver to keep it down. For what reason? I don't know. They're, they're keeping it down. It's they. They don't want they don't want silver to rally. Why not? What do they got against silver? And who the hell are they? They're always talking. They always do things. They seem to know everything. The they. But I would like to see silver rally. I would. I haven't bought more in a while, but uh, I got plenty. The problem, the question is, do we have enough pretzels to go with this beer? Penty. <laughs> if you know that movie, you really know your 80s comedies. Penty. I'll give you a hint. There's a there's cars involved and Burt Reynolds is there. Penty. <laughs> And by the way, speaking of that, Burt Reynolds and cars, if I ever do win uh, the lottery, by the way, I, I hit the Powerball. I, I hit the Powerball. I, I got the Powerball number. I won $4. Uh, 
I outlaid 30, I won four, so I'm down 24. What is that, 26? Yes, Smokey and the Bandit. I think it was one or maybe two. I forget. They're both great. What was I saying? Oh, right. If I was ever to win the Powerball, I would take 20 or 30 of my favorite people, buy you guys the greatest, whatever car you wanted, and we would race across the country and we, we would reinvent the Cannonball Run. Wouldn't that be awesome? Everybody gets a new car. We start from New York and we have to drive across the country. And then you have to meet in Washington and catch two and meet and catch two halibut for the prize. Or maybe we meet in San Diego. Ah, it depends. Ah, we could always go fishing later. But what car would you get? You'd get the Lamborghini. Yeah. I would get that uh that that monstrous like gangster looking uh Bentley, the coupe. I want to go in luxury, man. I get that Bentley coupe. McLaren. Everybody gets their favorite car. I got to put a bud. Well, we'll try to keep it under a quarter mil. So if I would win, if I won a billion dollars, would I come away with about 480 million? 20 cars, quarter mil. It's not bad. And then whoever wins, you get an extra mil. And then we make our way down to Vegas and we party for a week. I've always wanted to try the nitrous oxide tank tent, like the tent. You walk into the tent, you know, nitrous oxide, you guys have done whippets, right? Imagine a tent where the gas is just in the air. You just go into the tent and you, you can't help but inhale it. It's like all sealed up. There's some nitrous oxide pumping into the tent. You go into the tent for a little while, come out of the tent. Anyway, if I win a billion dollars, it's going to be a house. <laughs> you might take it my wife. No, she'll stay home. My wife doesn't like car, ride, car rides. My wife would actually, she'd hire somebody to pay to drive the car across the country. That's what she would do. She wouldn't drive. They're doing the cannibal? Get the hell out of here. They're doing the cannibal run? <gasps> no. Oh, my God. It really does exist. No freaking way. Seattle to Chicago? That's awesome. <laughs> you sense the dog staring at me? Look at you. Pathetic. Always wanting something. Uh... <laughs> He's just assuming I'm going to get up. All right, actually, I'm going to get up. You know, obviously, he needs to get out and go outside or something. All right, I'll see you guys at the open. Be careful. I'm just going to be chilling. See how this if this, this if this gap holds. If it doesn't hold, it could get very ugly. U G L Y. You ain't got no alibi. You ugly. See ya. Or maybe not.